I got to tell you, your uh, your videos that you put out, some of your adventures are the best. are absolutely freaking tremendous. Of all the stuff you've done, what is the nuttiest thing? I don't know. Um, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, I guess a lot of the the, the cobra stuff we did in Thailand yeah. was pretty pretty sketchy, but I mean, it just depends on on how you look at it. I mean, I've done, I've done quite a bit of stuff that I, I've you know. Look back and thought that might not have been the best idea. How much did it hurt when you had the uh, the guy in the market actually shoot you guys? That actually hurt a lot more than I thought. Uh, <laughs> Island was yeah we were yeah it's crazy the stuff that they have in those booths and stuff they have like weapons and guns and we just got the idea to let this cop because the cops are following us already anyway they kind of do that when we go, when we, when we go out and uh, so we just had a, an idea to because they wouldn't let us buy the gun so we just asked if they'd shoot us with it and uh, yeah for some reason I just thought it'd be like an airsoft gun. But it was a lot, a lot more painful than I expected for some reason. I think it was like copper, copper BBs or something. What, what is the bonus the UFC is giving out for the most creative uh, you know, videos they're putting up? Because I think you got to be oh, a time bonus? for that. One. Are yeah, you joking? When they were doing the Twitter thing and they said, if you if you get creative and put stuff like that, it's got to be swick. Well, I think they're going for a creative way to get followers on Twitter. So I, mean, I don't know if that's. I'd probably get it for for YouTube because of the videos, but I don't know about Twitter. But or are you tweeting your links? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I tweet them. So we got. I just, we, I just, we I just actually posted one last night. I posted last night the one about my surgery. I had uh, I just had ACL surgery, so I did like a little video blog on that. What does your wife say about this? She's on my, my newest blog. She she stays away from it, but <laughs> um, yeah, she yeah she just kind of is getting used to it, I guess, after seven years. What did she say when uh, when you told her that Baroni was going to start coming on the trips? Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, uh, that would scare me. She didn't really know. I mean, she knew we were all in Thailand hanging out and stuff. But I mean, a lot of these blogs we don't really plan. We just we always have a camera on us, and we're always doing crazy stuff. So you know, sometimes we just start filming, and, and it turns out to you know we capture some of the stuff. A lot of stuff we don't even put out. Um, but you know, the things we did, we've got some pretty interesting moments. Well, tell people from the, the fight side of things, and we're talking to Mike Swick here on the MMA Insiders, why you go to Thailand so often. Uh, well, I love the place. I mean, it's, it's, I've loved it ever since I trained there, you know, for the first time back in 2000. And, uh, you know, me and Roger Huerta are working on a real big gym uh, in Phuket. We're building, like, a, a fight community with bungalows and uh, a huge training facility, and it's right in the... It's a real beautiful part of the jungle right there on an island. It's one of the most beautiful islands in the world. And uh, so... We're uh, working on that right now, so I've been going back and forth trying to get that going. And you know, I just came back to do my fight camp, and then I got injured, so I just had surgery. That was a big setback. Mike, when, when you train over there, um, don't you lose something because you have access over in the states to some of the best uh, fighters in the world? And I would imagine you get better by training with better guys. So, what do you give up by having to go halfway across the world to prepare? No, I prepared AKA at the gym in San Jose for my fight camps. Um, but that's the problem. Um, and, and Thailand, I mean, they're, they're the best striking in the world with Muay Thai. So, I mean, anyone that's trying to improve their striking should go there and train with the Muay Thai guys. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a real adequate MMA program, as you just stated, in Thailand. Um, there's just uh, there's MMA camps where people are trying to do MMA, but there's no adequate top-level MMA training. So a lot of MMA fighters like myself and Fitch and all the guys from AKA, they go over there. Uh, and they teach, you know, do seminars, but they mostly just work on Muay Thai because there's not a real competitive, you know, top-level MMA program. But that's what we're going to bring. Uh, we're going to create a gym that not only has the best, you know, Muay Thai trainers where you can work on your striking, but if you are a top-level or not even a top-level, any level of MMA fighter, uh, we're going to have an adequate, you know, MMA program where it's going to be based off, you know, how we train at AKA, how Roger's trained for his fight camps and GSP and all these other camps that he's been with. So it's going to be, you know, the most well-rounded, you know, MMA camp that, that Thailand has. So that's kind of why we're doing it, to fill that void. Fascinating. Hey, Mike, uh, let's talk a little bit about the card tomorrow. And first of all, how tough is it going to be for you to uh, sit there and watch that card, knowing that uh, you went through a I saw your blog, and you went through a great training cramp, and you did uh, in, that, in the clips that we saw in your blog, you looked like you were in phenomenal shape. Uh, uh, injured a knee, I think it was what, your left knee, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how tough is it going to be to watch that? Oh, it's going to be tough. I was up last night watching like a lot of the media coverage from, from Brazil, and it's just so tough because I really wanted to be there. I really want to be there and fight. You know, I, I trained in Brazil before, and 
you know, it was a dream to come back and actually fight in, in Rio. So, I mean, it was a dream come true getting on that card. And, you know, I, was, I trained, you know, better than I've ever trained. I mean, my, my head got bad finally for the first time since I've been a welterweight. So, I mean, I was walking around at 190. I was when I got injured uh, a couple weeks ago. I was I was just under 190, so I was almost 20 pounds over still. I haven't been that big. Like when I fought Yushin Okami at middleweight, I was 182. Wow! So I was eight pounds bigger for this fight camp than I was when I fought Lawazo and Yushin Okami at middleweight. So I mean, this is the biggest I've ever been at welterweight, the healthiest I've ever been at welterweight for the first time in my welterweight career. You know, I'm not walking around at 170, malnourished, weak. I was actually it was the best camp of my life. I mean, I was I was going out there to. What, in my opinion, have my first true welterweight fight. And two weeks before I left, I, just, I got clipped right in my, my knee. And just it's just an unfortunate incident. And, I mean, because of my health, I think I was way less susceptible to getting injured. So I think things were going really great. But something like that, you just can't stop. I mean, the impact was so tough that it snapped my UCL, and, you know, completely off, tore my MCL, uh, messed up my meniscus. It was about as bad as it gets. When, when you look at it, and, and, and you know, you've had so many different things that have kept you out of fights and have, have impacted your career, is there ever a concern, like uh, you think of, you know, maybe in the NBA, Greg Oden now or Sam Bowie years before, that their, their bodies just would not allow them to compete at the level that their talent suggested they would? Um, well, you know, it, it was a concern here with my health these last few years, um, you know, with the esophagus issue, and, you know, I was – pretty much going to be retiring. I mean, I thought that when I backed out of that fight with, with Mitchell, I mean, he backed out, but, you know, I obviously, when the UFC called, they didn't have an immediate replacement. I, I pulled out as well. Um, I thought that was going to be it. I mean, the doctors have been telling me for the last couple of years I shouldn't even, you know, be doing anything athletic. You know, I should be focusing on my health and no stress and eating right and working on this condition. And so I thought I was done. And it was a hard thing to swallow. And since then, I got a lot more educated on my condition, what I can eat, and I had it completely under control for this fight. So it's kind of like being reborn. So for this fight camp, I definitely didn't think I was done. I definitely didn't think that my body wasn't going to hold up. I felt the best I've ever felt in my entire life. And so that's what's so tough. You know, it's tough because I can't make this fight, but I'm excited because I know I'm back. And this knee injury has nothing to do with my health, has nothing to do with my training, my technique. So all this is is, you know, a delay, but at least I know all I got to do is have another fight camp, you know, like I just had, and I will, and I'll, you know, I know I'm going to perform better than I ever have, so that makes me feel better, you know, that makes me feel better knowing it's just a delay, and, and I will come back stronger than ever, and, and that's a big improvement from last time. Last thing, before we let you go, uh, what's happening with Kashuk? Is he coming back at Welter, or is he going to fight middle? I don't know. Um, he, he says he wants to fight middle, um, but, you know, who knows? Now, why does he want to he do that? He does a lot of stuff, so you, you never yeah, know hey, who's hey. calling out Rashad <laughs> uh, when they need an opponent for him. So, you know, Kashi just, he says a lot of stuff, so, so who knows what will happen. But, yeah. you know, I know he has an interest to fight middleweight, and I guess he's pretty big right now. So, uh, yeah, he might. He might be fighting middleweight. All right, good deal. Mike, be safe. Uh, we're rooting for you to come back, you know, fully healthy and uh, get back in there in the octagon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it.